Ladies and gentlemen, another video about Fortnite being a dead game from Reese Hub this time. Let's see what his POV is, and I'll give my commentary as well. For six years, people have called Fortnite a dead game. The game is dead. Fortnite is dead. Is Fortnite dying? I hate this game right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, I feel like, okay, I feel like some of those are a little bit out of context, but also... I think when people say Fortnite is dead, they mean it's dead to them. Like Fortnite is a dead game to me. Maybe your friend stopped playing. Maybe you're not interested in it. But the reality is that if a game has millions of players playing it at any given time, it is so far from dead. A lot of people are just losing interest in Fortnite. Yet November 2023 was the biggest month in Fortnite history, yep. amassing over 100 million unique players. Exactly. And that was our biggest month on YouTube happened, as well. We need to first understand what it is that made Fortnite such a success to start with. When Fortnite Battle Royale released in 2017, it was a super fun, casual game that merged the trendy Battle Royale genre with Save the World's incredibly unique building mechanics. Building was initially designed to provide protection against Save the World. They hordes, really got so to lucky too down, because they to made Save the World with no intention of it ever being PvP. And then they just saw the Battle Royale trend and hopped on it and happened to have the most perfect building system. I mean, it, it became a lot better with time, but literally like a building system for PvP combat that just fit perfectly for BR, which is insanely lucky because there was that's that was never their intention. Elevate yourself up, floors to give yourself a place to walk on, and cones to. Uh, I don't really know what cones did in Save the World, to be honest. The editing mechanic allowed you to change the shape of your builds, which initially was used much more for it's cosmetic effects rather than to give did you Battle an Royale actual gameplay advantage. Out. These mechanics translated over to Fortnite Battle Royale incredibly well. In other Battle Royale games, it can be frustrating if a zone pulls far away from you and you're forced into the open as you're left vulnerable. If this happens in Fortnite, you can still build to protect yourself, oh, allowing you to make bomb. safer this is rotations, and you're bomb, not forced to head towards that one building in he the safe circle. Didn't get but it, the building bro. mechanic was so extraordinary when used in crazy. fights against other players. It was clear from the start how many insane outplays were possible, which made Fortnite so much more unique than any other shooter game. Almost every player remembers their first victory royale. Yeah! <laughs> People were just posting on every social media platform they could yes, at the time. Sir. There was just something so addictive in grinding for that first win, playing out dozens of matches finally just to pick up a victory royale. The fact that the game was free, combined with the incredibly unique building mechanics and the addictive victory royale format, propelled Fortnite to become a cultural phenomenon with millions of daily players. The beauty of early chapter one was basically that everyone sucked. Yeah. Even the people you remember as being such fast builders would get absolutely floored by your average pub player from today. Epic True. Games had accidentally created one of the highest skill gaps in all of gaming, which Complete as players accident. would start to improve, would Complete slowly start accident. to become a massive problem. In the Fortnite Season 3 update, the building mechanics were changed forever. Turbo building was added to the game, which allowed players to hold down their build button instead of clicking to place Remember each making build a video piece. about this. They got a million views that video. how fast players could build, but also caused a major issue that Epic Games would spend the rest of the chapter trying to resolve, boxing up. Up until this point, most fights had been build fights where players would aggressively try yeah, to crack you had higher to, like, than the other player to place give themselves the, the best angles to hit massive damage shots onto the other player. The introduction of turbo building changed this entirely. Defensively boxing up quickly became a close to uncounterable strategy. Players could just sit inside a box and hold their wall and there was little the other player on the other side could do. The average player was about a year Unless away you from figuring out how to replace ping, a wall, so many players but became then, increasingly if you had frustrated ping, you with Fortnite's wall. fighting mechanics. This skill gap would widen even faster in the next season with the addition of the playground playlist. Yep. Here, players could drop into their own private island and practice building and editing. Your average casual player wasn't grinding build fights in the Fun playground fact, mode, but the I ones actually who won were v1 improved Tifu and Myth when playground first got added, and I beat both of them. I had a winning record against both of them. Uh, obviously, Tifu and Myth both became a little bit better than me for, for a while, especially because I wasn't as much into competitive, but I did beat them in OG. Epic Games is a smart company, despite what you may think. Seeing a large percentage of their player base unhappy wasn't good for business. So over the next few seasons, they'd make many changes to try and fix this issue. Along with the wide but variety of explosives they, added they, to destroy every time they tried to up, nerf building, to everyone was damage upset. Through builds. Due to backlash from the community, this was reverted the next day because it made I fighting forgot about incredibly that. frustrating. Explosive damage through builds? I forgot Boom about that, bro. was added in Season 7, which created sound waves that destroyed any structure in a futile 
mile radius for 18 seconds. That is the heavy crazy. sniper was added, which with one bullet would instantly destroy any build piece and many, many more polarizing they items tried, were bro, added they tried. to the game. Epic Games even tried adjusting the turbo build time from a build placing every 0.05 seconds to 0.15 seconds, creating a constant delay before each build was placed. This would allow players spraying a boxed opponent to get one or two builds through the wall each time it was broken, weakening the strength of defensive play. If you want to try how this feels, just switch region to one where you get 100 ping more than you currently do. The game exactly. felt horrible, and unsurprisingly, this change was reverted within a few hours. Chapter 1 was just a constant repeating cycle. A broken but item added... You know, if we added... never had the fast building and the fast edits, like if they never gave that to us, we would have never known what we were missing out on. The problem is they gave us the fast mode and then they try to go slow. If they gave us the slow mode from the beginning, the slow turbo build from the beginning, it would have been a different story. Skilled players complain, the item gets nerfed or removed, and then the casual player base complains. It was kind of a lose-lose situation that really continually built up to its peak the mechs. Defensively, boxing up didn't matter. In fact, I mean, building didn't yeah. matter for the majority of season eggs. Finally, both casual and competitive players were in agreement. These were just too broken, and the game was not fun to play. Getting mechs! He's the mechs torping in! He's torping it in! <laughs> I love how we have both The mech is on high point. ground! Oh! Okay. What are the... This was the first time where Fortnite was really classified as a dead game. People just felt worn down by the consistent yeah. frustrating metas. At the end of the chapter, the Black Hole event pushed this narrative even further. With the game being offline for three days, schoolyard rumors spread that the game would never return, with Elon <laughs> Musk buying rumors. Fortnite and deleting it. As you may be able to guess, most people referring to Fortnite as a dead game at this time were just memeing, but they were about to get much more serious. With the release of Fortnite Chapter 2, the game felt fresh and new, which invigorated many players' but interest not enough in the Content game. In the However, with two. lockdowns happening early into the chapter, players had more time to practice than ever. Like the introduction of the playground mode early in uh, chapter creative. one, this led to the average player's skill to increase rapidly, furthering the already large skill gap in the game. Many casuals and even long-standing professional players quit at this time from a combination of not enjoying the game and falling behind the skill level. Chapter two was eight seasons long, lasting around two years. It was a good chapter, but it just felt a long time. A lot of players felt burnt out and moved on to other games. Competitive players also felt less motivated I didn't move to play. To their other prize games. pool had slowly been Fortnite. declining over the last few years. 2019 had a $30 million World Cup, but 2020 and 2021 had no major LAN events. This combination led to a lot of players just losing interest in competing. The combination of the <laughs> Which, massive skill clip? gap between casual and competitive players, the long repetitive chapter, and the declining state of competitive Fortnite led a huge number of players to quit the game. The term dead game was was now heavily associated with Fortnite's image. The stigma of being labeled a dead was game ever has kept dead players game, away though. from like, playing it, Fortnite it, it for years. It wasn't ever a dead game, but maybe Epic it was Games dying at one point. actually had the perfect solution. Fortnite OG. Now, Fortnite OG took us back to the original- Wait, 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 wait. Before they even added Fortnite OG, Fortnite had peaked in, in public player counts, Chapter 4, Season 4, right? And Chapter 4, Season 3 as well. They had like highest player counts when they started sharing it publicly. Chapter one map, a time before Fortnite had the reputation of being dead. Many players who thought Fortnite was boring and unenjoyable returned to the game and loved it. The average player count went from 1.5 million players to over 3 million. Each weekend peaked to over 5 million concurrent players with the end of season event having 11.6 million players. This number should be so much higher. So many people couldn't even attend the end of season event, myself included online all at the same time. November 2023 had over 100 million players, a lifetime record for Fortnite. With Fortnite moving to Chapter 5 on a brand new map with entirely different mechanics, the average player count for the most part has stayed the same. The players who returned to the game for Fortnite OG have continued to play. The nostalgia yep. brought a huge amount of them back to the game, but the gameplay is what's keeping the them player playing. Still this high may as be hell. shocking to hear, but Fortnite has actually been a really great game all of this time. The three elements that gave Fortnite its dead reputation are, for the most part, long gone. The massive skill gap in the game has, for the most part, kind of just figured itself out. As time has gone build, on, the average creative, player is significantly more skilled making. and knowledgeable about building and editing. Defensively boxing up is still a very strong strategy, but now the average player knows how to replace walls and take safer peaks. This can still be very intimidating for new players, but now there are bots in public matches, a zero build mode where players of any level can jump in and play, an entire host of creative maps 
maps that players can play and practice yep. the building mechanics and a ranked mode where most of the best players are. The casual players can, for the most part, sit back and enjoy playing Fortnite without having to worry about the sweats that much. On the flip side, the competitive community has also slowly been developing over the years. There's still a lot of issues in Fortnite tournaments, don't get me wrong, but participation is higher than ever. I actually True. think the ranked mode released earlier in the year has been a big contributor to this, a despite it not being the also, most competitive, competitive mode. Competitive content on YouTube is doing really well too. Excited by the idea of ranking up and grinding I've seen it. That One on look a at lot the of slash on my Fortnite competitive subreddit content. will tell you that. Over the last year, the massive surge in players in the ranked playlists have been a gateway for these players to get into competitive Fortnite. Even though the tournament prizing is currently an all-time low, tournament participation has continued to rise over the last few years with solo cash cups now repeatedly having over 100,000 players. But most importantly for the competitive players, there's consistency in tournaments. On the surface, the reduction of tournament prize pool from 2019 was a sign that Epic Games weren't interested in competitive Fortnite. But the reality was that giving away $100 million a year in tournament That's prizing is a pretty horrible business strategy. It seems like Epic Games have slowly lowered the prize pools over the years to find a yearly total that is sustainable, yet still gives away enough money to get new and existing players interested in competing. Competitive Fortnite is no longer a get-rich-quick scheme, but now it's a much more stable competitive community which keeps players coming back season after season, and also I don't important see a reason why this won't make continue content. for years and years to come. The pipeline the of making the game be, fun uh, for new players and then transitioning a percentage of them into competitive players ultimately leads to a community that will play Fortnite for years at a time. Look at any game that's been successful for over 10 years, and a central theme of nearly all of them is a strong competitive scene. Players who play for longer spend more money, and the players who play for the longest amount of time are usually competitive players. True. And finally, staleness. The first two chapters were over two years long each, now but since then, one chapter year. three and chapter four have only lasted one year, which has kept and things that's a much new more fresh. Epic Games seem heavily committed to expanding Fortnite into much more than just a battle royale, however. The newly released LEGO Fortnite is a completely LEGO different game mode and that festival. on release I mean, on, has man. over one million concurrent players. LEGO has and fallen this was just off a little bit, Thursday but morning. once they do They're another major update for it, everyone's going to hop right back on it. Mode, and I'm sure many, many other different games in the future. The implementation of UEFN means the number and range of new experience to play are rapidly expanding. Players are no longer stuck to just playing 1v1 or Zone Wars maps. They can play Skibbity Toilet Free For All <laughs> or a good map. With new oh, tools man. continually being implemented into map. UEFN, <laughs> the quality of these maps are ever increasing. It seems like Epic Games are truly committed into turning Fortnite into the multiverse, and I think Levin 2K says it best. A certain man in our community who don't do anything and they'll complain and say Fortnite's dead. Fortnite's not dead. You are dead. That's what I'm you talking about, man. That's what I'm talking about. Guys, great video from Risa. Be sure to subscribe to his channel. Show him some love. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.